Hello guys and welcome to episode 9 of my Rome 2 Total War campaign, Caesar in Gaul playing as the Romans and today we're going to be continuing from where we left off, staring at the army of the Vocontii which is basically threatening Nabomartius and will most definitely take it over by the end of the next turn. Now one thing I'm still pretty worried about is this army. Now they don't actually have a general but at the end turn I was just thinking about this between episodes if they get given another general they're gonna have a full unit a full general unit basically in order to attack Segedunum and I'm not sure what the garrison forces are gonna be like in Segedunum because I haven't controlled it for that long so I'm not sure if the troops will be replenished there and if they're not a unit of like heroic riders or whatever they can get like spear nobles or heroic nobles or whatever the army can muster up they will absolutely wreck garrison forces so just to be safe I think I'm going to just recruit another general here it's not going to cost me too much 425 for a general unit isn't actually that much at all we just need to make sure that we raise the right army and we're going to go with some veteran legionaries to defend Segedunum I think that's probably the most sensible thing to do Commander. and um, hasn't actually cost me that much. Did that even take anything away from my treasury? I don't think it did. Well anyway, not not that it really matters but that's nice to have a general there anyway in order to defend that area. I may as well get some vigilers in there as well even though they are pretty weak. You may as well just have some Levy Freeman to be honest because at least they have a charge bonus. Yeah okay we'll go with some Levy Freeman with that army. That's probably a little bit better. Okay so that could just be the fourth legion in Sega Dunham. I'm sure I can build that up to be something even better at some point but that just gives us something to defend that for now and maybe we can even use that veteran legionary unit to just go and take over some of these undefended settlements to see how that goes. Anyway uh, that should be about it for now so let's move straight on to the next turn. The stalkers of Kama are knocking on the door of Narvamartius. I really don't think there's much I can do here. We do have two units of legionaries. Even in uh, Testudo though, the amount of skirmishes they have, all these Celtic youths will utterly annihilate them. And the plebs, well, they're not going to be doing much against Levy Freeman, I don't think. And well, Celtic skirmishes, like I say, we don't have enough of them to be effective. I'm not sure if I should give this up though. It might be worth defending this on the battle map. So I'm going to go for it. We'll see how much damage we can do to the Vogon TI. This is always going to be a brutal battle. But I'm hoping that these two units of legionaries can maybe hold their ground at uh, one of these streets. We're going to bring them all to the, the center and hide them behind buildings so that the skirmishers can't use their missiles that effectively. And we'll have our own skirmishers in the center as well. Okay, so we'll see where they attack from and I'll basically just line up my legionaries in order to counter that and hopefully we can hold them off. It's a very large army, as you can see. The Levy Freeman already on the move. The Celtic U is now following. It looks like they're going to be coming in from this side. So maybe down this street. The smaller the street, the better. Because my men are actually better than theirs in terms of quality. It's just that if they get surrounded and overwhelmed, then there's not much I'm going to be able to do about it. So yeah, they're going to come down this small street on the on the right. Or are they going to break off and come down both? Oh, that is really annoying. Okay, so what we're going to do instead then, I will get this one unit of legionaries to spread out over here. 
we'll get my main general unit to come over here. And we'll get one unit of skirmishers to face this way, the other one to face this way. And my plebs can just run into the back of the melee once it engages and my levy freemen can help wherever is needed most. So we're going to line up the legionaries. And we will brace for impact. Skirmishers! No! Doesn't look like they followed up on this left side. So what I'm going to do is bring my Levy Freeman over on the right. And my Legionaries should be able to hold their ground. They've fixed uh, formation attacks now, so it should be very effective. I'm actually going to charge my Levy Freeman into the back of this melee to help out. Okay, so this is actually working out quite nicely at the moment. They haven't engaged all their troops at once, which is allowing me to, to kill off the ones that are. They also haven't had a chance to use their overwhelming amount of skirmishers to attack my troops. I'm throwing javelins over the top all the time, targeting the unit that's furthest back. This isn't something I had prepared for though. They're attacking me from three sides. We've got these spear nobles here. That are engaging one unit of my legionaries. But it looks like my plebs are going to have to deal with the levy freemen. I'm going to actually break off one of my levy freemen units as my legionaries continue to fight on this side. And they can be used to to hold off the enemy's levy freemen until I can get the legionaries over. The men are wavering. Okay, we need to stop moving these guys around. The Celtic warriors are shaken, and with any luck, they will break shortly. There we go. We managed to kill them off. That's really nice. Over on the left here, my legionaries are holding well against these spear nobles. Their formation attack is actually working very well. Maybe we can kill the general. That would really help us out. Going to have to get my general to line up again though. And we're going to have to back him up with plebs this time for the next unit of Levy Freeman that comes into contact. Now this melee on this right side, I'm going to throw some javelins into that. Still doing well over here. This is uh, really the battle that I need to count on to win. Just a little engagement here, these legionaries versus the spear nobles. If they start to get a bit low, then I can use the whip, which increases their melee attack and weapon damage for a little while. And what I was hoping That's wouldn't happen is now happening. The enemy is using their slingers effectively to attack my general unit. I'm going to hide my general unit around the corner. And if they come any closer, I'll charge them down with my plebs. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Actually, I might just do that now. Because otherwise, yeah, they're going to fire into the back of this melee, and that's not something I really want to be dealing with right now. So I'll get these plebs to go and charge onto their slingers. They may not be that effective, but it's worth trying. Still winning the combat on that side. I'm going to reinforce the Levy Freeman here with my general unit.
And it looks like I might be able to catch up with these slingers. And the plebs will go to work. <laughs> the plebs will probably actually lose this melee combat. But at least they can do some damage. Okay, that's uh, music to my ears. Be a noble unit on this side has failed to break through my legionaries, and therefore their general died. Once that unit breaks, we can have an extra unit to help out against these levy freemen. My plebs got annihilated by these slickers, um, and the. Levy Freeman are now charging through the open gap. We do have these skirmishes here that we can now use as melee forces. At your service. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. I'm going to use my general to Engage. attack his Levy Freeman. Kill. And I will reinforce yeah. them with the Celtic skirmishes. This melee is still going on. There are only 33 spear nobles left. Well, my legionaries have nearly broken the unit. Really nice fight going on. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shame. But this really didn't need to happen. My levy freemen are now broken. We're going to get charged into the back by these levy freemen. And shit is only going to go down from here. Wow. Okay, now I've got to hope that my legionaries can kill off this Levy Freeman unit and turn round, otherwise Our men flee I'm only going to lose more men. This is a shameful display. I managed to kill off the Spear Nobles and the enemy general, but I don't think it's going to matter. Need to get the legionaries back in time to engage this big clump of levy freemen. <laughs> okay, that's good, that's good. That's worked out for us. We've managed to break the levy freemen unit that I needed to. But now my general unit is being attacked in the back by the slingers that I was trying to kill earlier. And with my general unit breaking. Well, my second unit of legionaries also decided to run. Well, I don't blame them, to be honest. <laughs> they probably would have died in the end, but it would have been nice to kill off more of these Levy Freeman units. I think we did really well there, uh, considering the circumstances. So we get end the battle, close defeat. We both killed 900 men each. Now, considering that was a garrison army, I think I've done well to deplete a lot of these units, although I didn't destroy them completely. I did annihilate the Celtic warrior unit and kill his general, but I don't think that's going to be matter going to matter too much, as he's going to bring up a second. So they actually sacked Narva Martius. They didn't take it over. And what does this do? Ludi Plebei. Plus 20% wealth from culture, plus 4 public order per turn. It's really nice. After Rome threw off the rule of the Etruscan kings in 510 BC to found the Republic, politics was the domain of the aristocratic patrician order, who remained distinct from the main body of free Roman citizens or plebeians. It wasn't until the conflict of the orders resolved in 287 BC the plebs earn political representation and, in many other matters, equal standing with the patricians. I'm not going to read it all, but you can pause it and read the rest if you like. Okay, so let's go through our uh, event messages. Public forum was completed. We have an edict issued, which is nice. It actually worked out because Narva Martius wasn't taken over, but the thunderbolts of Taranis are threatening 
Nabomatius once again. The unseasonal conditions of late autumn um, may affect us. Not sure what exactly that will do, but there we go. We've got plus two cunning trait gained. A quartermaster report of our legionary cavalry being finished. That's really awesome. And the first garrison army has been completely destroyed. So that's probably replenishing in Narbomartis at the moment. And if the thunderbolts of uh, Taranis come along, and there probably won't be much to defend it. Oh well. Let's get uh, the third legion and start marching towards the enemy. Now, it's going to take us a while to get through uh, the mountains, I think. Because of the, because there is no roads to move on, and therefore getting to Vasio might be a bit of a mission. But um, in the meantime, we might have chance to get the first legion back uh, to defend Narvamartius. Not entirely sure what's going to happen, really. Now, I think what I might do, or try to do, is uh, finish the defender of the hills with the 4th Legion. I'm going to quickly employ some mercenaries, I think, to help me out with that endeavour. Some Gallic Warriors will probably be the most effective because it's going to be mostly melee combat. And because they have two units and I already have two units, having a third will give me the advantage so that I can flank with it. We have completed our technology though, so I'm going to move on and have a look at at what we're going to do here. Quickly scroll through our options. Might be nice to go towards some military buildings. But support for Caesar would probably be the better way to do that. So then we can move towards getting a cohort barracks. Then again, it might be worth just going for more sort of happiness technologies so that we have more room to expand and we don't have to wait around until uh, the happiness sorts itself out. So we'll go to culture, I think. And this one actually might be quite nice. The plus 5% army replenishment will be very good. And it enables the building of a library and a, vigil a Vigiles Urbani. Yeah, I'm not sure what those two buildings do. I think the library is good for research rate. But the plus 5% army replenishment will make it a lot easier for us to continue to expand. Especially after large battles like we had last episode with the First Legion. Okay, let's go ahead and, and take out the defenders of the hills. They're going to retreat. It's actually broken their fortification. Which is going to make it even easier for us to kill them now. And they're also in range of... <laughs> they're also in range of the First Legion. So they are going to get utterly destroyed. I'm just going to have to go ahead and auto-resolve this one now. That's quite funny. We go with a protective stance just so we don't lose that many men. <laughs> there was really no point in me fighting that battle if I had the First Legion at my back. So there we go. I think the uh, Fourth Legion that I recruited was worth it in the end. We're going to kill the captives, and that destroys that army. So that works for me. And what I'm going to do is create a commander there. We're going to give plus 5% armor for all units, I think, in that army. And then we will begin to recruit some more levy freemen, I think, and we will disband the mercenary Gallic warriors. Because they have a high upkeep. We're going to move the army first and then recruit the Levy Freeman. That way we can get closer to Narbomartius that's going to be needing defending. So Nemesos is finally happy. We're going to convert the culture of the city to make it a Roman city finally. And we will create a sacred grove to increase the public order here even further. And it might be worth building an amphitheater. Just so that, I could, so that I can move on from Nemesos with the second legion. But I think that is the majority of the armies moved for this turn. Although I, 
can probably go and attack Sotium with the army in Devona. I'm not sure. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the First Legion down towards Narva Martius. I'm going to stop recruiting with the Fourth Legion. And I'm going to force march them to Toloza to sort out the public order. Um, that way I can continue to build up this army and that will help defend any settlements that may get attacked on by the Vivisai, although the Vivisai shouldn't have any big armies anymore. Commander. And it will allow the First Legion to deal with the Vocontii, which I think is definitely what's needed. So I'm actually going to fast move this army into Narva Martius and that way they will be defended this turn. So let's get our spy to continue towards the Vivisai so that we can see what's going on. Continue towards their capital. And it looks like that the only thing they have is a fleet at the moment. So not too much to worry about. Trishan stay where he is. And the second legion the same. So there we go, all done for this turn. Let's move on to the next one. Only the greatest dare speak of peace to their enemies. Only the weak seek the death of all. So, the Voconti, I actually want a peace treaty. And I am actually very tempted to take this. Uh, they want 100 gold for it, which is not an issue. But it will allow me to focus my efforts on destroying the Vivisai. And therefore, like I say, I'm going to accept that for now. So as much as I wanted to use uh, the Third Legion to destroy the Vocontii, I can now use them for other matters, which will include destroying the Vivisai, and then we can move north towards the Lemma Vises. The household expands for one of my generals, Gallic Bard, plus 2% morale for all units, and he currently has plus 1 authority when leading a, a fleet. Uh, we're going to, of course, replace that, because if he's not controlling a fleet, then it's pretty pointless. And now, with the Vocontii no longer being at our backs, we can move Caesar all the way back up towards Sotium. It's going to take us a little while to sort out the happiness in this province after the after Narbi Martius was sacked. But if as long as I repair all these buildings this turn, it should help out quite a bit. Convert this to a sacred grove as well. Actually, we don't need another sacred grove, so I'm actually going to demolish that building. Uh, but we are going to convert this farm to one of our own co culture. Ready for Ready for so I don't necessarily want to move too far towards the Vivisai in case they attack my army, but I am going to remain in range of Sotium so I can take it next turn. Nemesos is continuously getting happier, which is soon going to allow me to move on uh, the second legion to attack a new tribe further north. I'm going to move closer to Birdie Gala with my spy. Maybe I can try and take out one of these new generals with assassination. Unfortunately, my agent was wounded. Never mind. My champion or veteran in this army has increased his skills, so we're going to see what sort of skills I can give him. I think I'm going to go with a Paragon to give the plus one authority and the plus five percent critical chance of success in all actions. So that should do nicely. And I think that's again another turn complete, although not much really going on. I'm going to end it there. Run, run, run. 
and the military sabotage by a taco has wrecked the baggage train of my first legion. That is extremely annoying. Because if we go to normal stance now, you can see that I'm not in range to attack Sotium anymore. That is such a bummer because I was hoping I'd be able to take that over. Either way, a trait gained for my patrician, uh, which is actually a really nice one, plus two public order per turn in the province that he resides. I am going to give him a new skill. Probably just upgrade his scholar skill actually to give us the extra research rate and the wealth from culture. Uh, Trouble Populous for Nabo Nensis. And a Hidden Agent Exposed. And let's continue to move the Third Legion towards the Vivisai. Second Legion, still stationed in Nemesos. It would be nice if we could actually recruit some better forces in these uh, Gaelic lands. Because at the moment, <laughs> the uh, troop recruitment is rather limited, to say the least. There might be a chance here for me to create a field of Mars, which is what I'm going to do, so that I can recruit legionaries in the entire of Narbonensis. That would be a really nice thing to be able to do. We're going to convert this to a Roman village here and we're also going to change this bronze workshop uh, to a manipular barracks. If I do that actually I may not be may not have to create the field of Mars. I can instead go for a workshop which would increase the armor and weapons of my troops and unlock Roman ballistas which will be really useful for destroying the enemy. What do you wish of me? If you've watched my Iceni campaign, you'll know I love using ballistas to annihilate armies. And it will allow me to actually make the 4th Legion very powerful once both those buildings are complete, although one of them is going to take 6 turns, which is actually pretty ridiculous. But never mind. I think we're once again <laughs> done for this turn. I wish I could do more, but there isn't really much to do. So let's move on. So, agent recovered. Thank God. We can start using my spy again to have a look at what the Vivisai are up to. And a call to arms. Raise an army at the following settlement, Devona. And that will give us call to arms, which is plus one army recruitment capacity for all provinces for six turns. And a 500 gold. Now that's at Devona. It's up here. They want me to recruit another army. I already have one though. That's Like why would I create another one? We'll hold on to that mission for now and I might complete it if I need to. The public forum's finished in Toulouse though. So that might be worth making into an amphitheater or we can head towards something else but I'm not entirely sure what is good in Caesar and Ghoul to make. Wine trader might be nice just to get the extra money. You could do with a lot of money to be honest. But it looks like we actually get more from a cattle trader, especially with this herding ground in the province. So I think I'm going to go with the cattle trader. So that's good. We've got an encouraged populace now in Helvetia. And military sabotage attempted on the First Legion twice to wreck the baggage train and poison provisions. But it didn't work, so we can move on to attack Sotium. So as much as this has been a relatively mediocre episode, we finally have a chance to attack the enemy. So I am going to take this opportunity, even though it may extend the episode, to assault Sotia.
We're going to wait for the rain to go away so we can see what we're doing. We'll get my legions ready to go. And we will probably basically attack straight away. Get my ballistas into position. And my catapults on the right. Skirmishers aren't going to re really be able to do anything, I don't think. Neither are the light horse, unless I bring them over on the left here. And that should be done. Okay. So we'll move up the legionaries. You know my quality. And that I win battles. I have fine, able soldiers. And we'll get the second line to move up behind. Listen for orders, and all will be well. Caesar talking to his men. Telling them to just listen the hell up. Get my horses to move up on this flank. I'm actually going to get these men to run, just so that we don't waste any time and then we can start to speed it up. I'm going to move my catapults up a little bit, same with my ballistas. So they're in range to fire into the square as soon as we spot the enemy forces. So it looks like they've lined up some tribesmen here to block the advance of my horsemen. Speed up the movement of my men. Ballista. And it looks like my ballistas now have a chance to fire. Get the first line of legionaries to move into this gap in their wall. The second lot can line up behind them. We'll get the skirmishers to line up behind them. And the warriors behind them. Okay, I need to stop these guys from firing. Because at the moment, uh, they're not being very effective firing at what they currently are. Firing at these tribesmen all clumped up. That's something that may help. I'm going to go with some flammable rounds as well. Burning a lot of these tribesmen alive. <laughs> And roll through the enemy, setting them all on fire. It's actually pretty insane. Legionaries. So we're going to move forwards now with these legionaries before we take too many shots from the enemy's skirmishers. Going to keep moving on. stop these ballistas from firing because no doubt they will end up hitting my own troops. I'm going to get my horsemen now to charge into these slingers that have been peppering them without me noticing. And we're just slaughtering the rest of them now. Very dead slinger unit. And we'll chase down the rest as well Charge! with these light horse. horse and that is job done and the battle there decisive victory we lost 127 men they lost 1042 basically all of them And Sotium is ours. We're going to occupy that. And we will begin to convert towards happiness buildings. There we have it. That has unfortunately 
been my time. So I'm sorry that ha much didn't really go on throughout this episode. There wasn't really any huge interesting battles. But the advancement of the campaign was, was actually quite nice to see and the resolution with the Verconti I was actually really nice as well. So it has left me open with a lot of strategic opportunity to destroy the Vivisai and move further north without having to go back on myself to attack the Vocontii. So hopefully we can get like a trade agreement with them or something, start making them our defensive allies, stuff like that, that might actually help out. So anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.